A couple months ago, John and I took a trip to Italy that I know a lot of you followed along with. And the dish that I ate most often, could not get enough of, and could not wait to try to recreate when I got home, was the spaghetti alla vongole, the spaghetti with clams. It's such a simple dish. I have in front of me all the ingredients I'm gonna need, except for olive oil, and of course the star of the dish, the clams, which are in the fridge right now. It's the perfect example of the sum is so much more than its parts and you'll see it comes together really quickly. It is a luxurious, gorgeous seafood pasta. Today, I'm gonna to show you the method that was told to me. It was like a, it was like a secret history of this dish. Um, the secret recipe that the maitre d' at the restaurant I was eating at shared with me, which I'm pretty sure was his mother's version, mixed with like what the restaurant was doing. And then I took my own little liberties with it. So it's authentically Daphne. The first thing you need when you make spaghetti with clams is great clams. And to get those, you wanna buy them fresh, definitely go to the fishmonger portion of your grocery store or even better, a dedicated fishmonger to get your clams. You don't wanna mess around with old shellfish, it's not a thing. So the first thing I wanted to do was get my clams ready to go. And for that, I did three saltwater baths for these little bad boys. So that's putting your clams in a shallow bowl, topping it off with uh, cold water, and then about a quarter cup of kosher salt, let it sit for half an hour, rinse, do it again, rinse, do it again. The third bath is where my clams are right now in the refrigerator so they stay nice and cold. And the purpose of that saltwater bath is to remind us of being at the ocean, is to actually help your clams release. Actually, you can see in the water, see all these little dirty flecks of dirt and silt and anything else that these Little well, clams have been keeping hidden inside their shells. You wanna give them a chance to release it into the water. What they're basically doing is sucking in the salty water and spitting out the bad dirt and everything else that might be trapped inside. So you wanna do this process. If you don't have time to do it the day of, the night before you can do basically exactly this and let them sit overnight and it will give them a chance to really clean it all out. And then you're left with gorgeous, clean, salty, briny clams. I'm gonna rinse them off quickly, get rid of any last little bit of the dirt. And don't forget guys, your clams are alive and you do wanna be kind of gentle with them. You don't want their shells to split while you're here doing the cooking process. You want them to stay intact because by creating that nice firm seal, they're gonna first steam in their own liqueur and start to open their little mouths like this. And then you're gonna drop a nice big gulp of white wine into their mouths and they're gonna go, ah, delicious, and open their mouths up. And then they're going to release all their salty liquid into the pasta sauce. They're gonna get coated with olive oil and garlic and fresno chili and parsley and a little white wine. They're gonna bathe your pasta in so much flavor and it can't happen if your clams are dead. So be gentle to them. The first and most critical component to this dish besides the clams is garlic. I'm gonna get three cloves of garlic and you can slice it if you want, um, if you want to. I find slicing garlic does three things I don't love, which is why I'm not gonna do it here. Number one, for whatever reason, sliced garlic and I cannot get along and I always burn it, always without exception. Number two, I don't know why this would be the case, but I don't find it infuses the flavor of garlic into the sauce quite as much as I'd like it to do, where finally chopping the garlic really does that for me. And number three is you gotta be more precise about it and maybe you can tell that I like to keep it nice and loose around the kitchen. So you can slice if you'd like to slice. I'm going to roughly chop three cloves of garlic. You know, these are actually enormous cloves. So if you do not want it quite so garlicky, you can definitely ta ta taper it down a little bit and use two cloves. And I love the way this dish to me is like the perfect example. Oh, there you go. Sliced garlic. Fine, we'll try it sliced like that. Why not? It's so pretty. Fresno chili. I like a little chili heat in here because again, this, the flavor pairings are so simple. There's such a really nice highlight moment for the clams. I just want a little heat to go on. And I am going to mince these chilies up so that they um, really distribute nicely into the sauce. I don't want any big bites of chili. Um, and if you want to skip the fresh chili portion of this party and just go for crushed red chili flake, you can absolutely do that. I am going to leave the seeds in also because I do want it as peppery as possible. And once I have my thin strips, I'm going to gather them together and just work my blade straight across to give me lovely little minces of fresh Fresno chili. Fresno is basically a red jalapeno, so think of it roughly in that same heat profile. If you wanna go 
mm, even spicier. You can definitely get another kind of red chili. I do think the red, the red color is for me though, important though it's totally arbitrary because it is a pasta dish where the olive oil is basically the entire sauce, olive oil plus the brine of our clams um, and a little garlic and chili um, and my wine. <laughs> but a lot of olive oil comes through and so you wanna use an olive oil where the flavor and the taste of it is really wonderful and pronounced. So we're gonna take about a quarter cup of olive oil just to coat the base of a nice pan that has I, the most important thing for me is that my pan has plenty of surface area because I do want to let the garlic brown up um, with the chili, add those clams in and have them be touching the hot surface of the pan so they start to open their little mouths and have that steaming effect. So get your heat to a medium high and with the oil still cold is when I like to add my garlic in so that it has time to infuse the oil before the oil gets too hot and starts to burn it. I'm going to add the chili in at the same time. So cold oil in a cold pan with our garlic and our chili over a medium heat now. And it's gonna start to come up to temperature and create the base for this gorgeous sauce. A little bit of salt. We don't need to add too much salt yet because there will be saltiness coming from the clams and we'll have a chance to season the pasta water as well, of course. So layer by layer. Let's watch and see as these slivers of garlic that I did just for you start to fry in the oil. I'm living out my full Italian dream right now, I'll have you know. <laughs> um, nothing like making a garlicky chili spaghetti sauce in a white silk slip. So I'm really living on the edge as we can see. And it's getting very close to time to add the clams. You can use canned clams here. For me, the benefit of using the fresh clams is you're actually, as they steam, you're gonna get the benefit of that little bit of salty liquid, the liqueur on the inside of the clams, once they open up and start steaming. So it just helps to boost the flavor of the overall sauce. If you can get fresh, do it. Okay, dropping the heat a little bit lower, you can see the garlic is nice and golden in places. The chili is frying up. Now is the time to add your clams. And then, quickly, Give them a quick toss in their hot oil and cap them so that they start to steam. And right when their little mouths start to open up ever so slightly, like three minutes from now is when we're gonna drop the wine in all over. And they're gonna drink it right up and it's gonna be so delicious. Okay, so I just dropped the clams and come and see them. Nobody has opened their mouths yet. This is actually the perfect time to drop the pasta in because it'll take two or three minutes there. Then we'll add the wine and cook another six to nine minutes. So we wanna make sure that the pasta has time to cook till al dente and not a minute longer. I've got spaghetti here today going into my thoroughly salted pasta water. Just give that a quick stir. Make sure that nothing is settling to the bottom. And remember we talked about this guys, you don't wanna overfill your pasta water pot. You don't need tons and tons of liquid, just enough to cover your pasta by about an inch or two. And what that's gonna do is really help to concentrate the starch that comes out of your pasta into the cooking liquid. Because pasta cooking water is one of your best friends for creating ultra velvety, sticky pasta sauces. Pasta sauces that really coat the noodle, drink into the noodle, flavor it from the inside out and the outside in. Cannot be beat. Oh, anybody's talking to me? <gasps> They're starting to talk to me. Come here. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at him. Mm hmm. He's thirsty. What are we going to give him? Some dry white wine. Yes. So try like a third to half of a cup of a dry white wine. Cap it up. Let those clams cook and drink in the white wine. Go back to like a medium so it keeps steaming. And now let's, cut, let's chop some parsley. And we're like pretty much done. That is the beauty of this kind of food, guys. It is the beauty of these classic Italian dishes. They're so simple, but they look incredible. They taste even better. It's like, you know, the definition of genius. So yes, we have plenty of flavor already happening in this sauce, but I find a little hint of green goes a long way. The restaurant that we were eating this at all the time did have 
squash blossoms, which are the tender, delicate flowers of your squash plants, your zucchini plants. Um, and they would mince those up and add them in with the sauce and just saute it quickly before adding the pasta in. It was ridiculous. I don't have squash blossoms. Um, so I'm gonna add some parsley, which is also traditional. I just have some flat leaf parsley here and I'm gonna give it a really quick little mince. We're gonna add some of these tender stems, mincing those up as well. And you can stop whenever you get too far down and it starts to turn a little woody and thick. Let's check on the plants, come, come see. Oh my goodness. Steam away, little babies. I don't wanna let off too much of their liquid, but I do wanna give them a quick little toss now and then just to make sure everybody's sharing nicely. The wine also has the added benefit of deglazing the pan, lifting up any pieces of garlic or uh, chili that might be stuck to the bottom, gathering together all that delicious flavor. Make sure your heat is at least a medium now so that that bubbling wine action is happening, the steam is happening, the clams are opening and drinking it all in. Okay, let's taste the pasta, see how close we are to being done here. Like 30 seconds away. Let's check on the clams. Mamma mia. This is amazing. Let's drain the pasta. Don't forget to get yourself a solid cup of that salty, starchy, liquid gold. Get your colander. Okay. Let's see how you're doing. Oh yeah. Now, were there any clams that had not opened? You're gonna lift those out and toss them because that means they're dead. And we do not eat dead clams. They're all cooked now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Ones that were dead before we put them in the pot. So these are all gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Tender, soft, luxurious. I wanna let off a little bit more of that wine just so that the flavor really condenses into the sauce. Now that everything is nice and open, I can afford to release some of that steam. Oh, see, yeah, this guy, he's thinking about opening. I'll give him another minute. But this guy, mm-mm, no, thank you. Bye-bye. Let's taste a clam. Now that they're now gorgeous and open and lovely. And our garlic looks damn good, people. I'm glad you pushed me to do that, thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. 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 It's all happening. It is all happening right here, right now. Oh my gosh, those clams are so tender. Oh, so delicious. Now, if you want to be super kind to your guests or your family or whoever's eating this dish, you can laboriously pick out each of the clams from their shells, put them in the sauce, toss it together with pasta, and then just like artfully place the shells on top of the pasta, like two or three to a plate so that people see that you made it from real beautiful, fresh clams, but they don't have to fight with the clams themselves. I personally am of the opinion that I like it rustic and I kind of am obsessed with serving people, especially at like fancy, you know, dinner parties, whatever, um, food that they have to eat with their hands or that they have to kind of like fight with a little bit because it loosens everybody up. It's really easy, or I should say easier to make friends when you're all like fighting with a chicken wing or trying to pick your gorgeous fresh clams from your gorgeous fresh clam shells and allowing the fun and the physicality and the like, just the sens the sensation of traveling with your food to take hold of you. So at my house, you are getting the clams in the shells and you are gonna like it. And I think it's time. I think it is time to put the pasta together and taste it. Grab your gorgeous pasta, add it to your gorgeous clam. It sat for a second, but it's fine. You can loosen it up dribble by dribble with just a little of your gorgeous starchy pasta water. First, we're gonna add in this parsley, but next we are going to do something that 
I gather some places in Italy do do, but it was really in my mind about trying to achieve the most luxurious, silky coating of sauce, similar to what I had on that delicious vacation. But also because I spend a lot of time up in Maine where clams are served with drawn butter, I want just a touch of butter in this dish to finish it all off. So at this point, the pasta water is helping to bring all the sauce into the pasta noodle so that it is getting fragrant from the inside out and from the outside in. At this point, you can add a little drizzle more olive oil just to give that sauce an extra silky, velvety finish. And then just give it a quick toss. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter just to help everybody get to know each other. Mm. Oh, tell me, tell me that is not the way clams are supposed to be enjoyed. Hello. Oh yeah, you can see this sauce really gorgeously coating every single pasta noodle. I'm gonna cut the heat and serve it up. First, get yourself a little twirl of spaghetti. There we go. Now, then artfully place your clams over top. Okay, well, you already saw me taste the clams, but I'm obviously going back now, again, now that there's a little finishing butter on top. It's so luxurious. The sauce is light, but so packed with flavor. The garlic coming through and the chili, all those briny clams. I gotta tell you something. When it comes to meals, that immediately take you on vacation, that are so simple to make in your own home kitchen, this might be the tops. Buon appetito.